Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 401. We're continuing in our lesson titled, Rise of the Fourth Empire. This will be part 2. Scripture teaches, the Fourth Empire will be unlike any kingdom that has existed on the earth in the time of of the existence of the human race. Daniel, 7th chapter, verse 23. I can't emphasize enough the change that man is going to experience. Daniel 7, verse 23. <clears throat> Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse, altered, changed, from all kingdoms, shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. <clears throat> the scripture gives us <clears throat> extensive <clears throat> understanding of the fourth empire, Daniel, Revelation, <clears throat> Matthew, Luke. And when we understand through the perspective of the Spirit, many things begin to coalesce. For instance, Scripture indicates the Fourth Empire will connect all races of the Luciferians. Those on the surface, those under the earth, or those in the heavens. It's going to... <clears throat> touch and ultimately unite all the diverse races. The Father's going to bring them into a, I won't call it a unity, but he'll bring them into a relationship that does not currently exist. The relationship is non-contentious between themselves. Is that the point that you're making? No. The relationship is in that they will all find the need to have a common experience within themselves. It might be through the mercantile system. It might be through events that they feel is a threat. In other words, the revelation of the kingdom of God, the judgment, coming judgment of God. Things are going to bring them to a point in which they focus and operate together. So their allies but still contentious between each other. Oh, just like humans. Okay. <laughs> each one has his own agenda right, right, and they right. come together because of need, necessity. Okay. Yes. Is it because they're being introduced to a different reality than they are used to? And so they have to go about this as intelligently as they possibly can to maximize their, their existence in it. Well, I would say not a new reality but a change in the reality that they've experienced. The Father is going to bring in conditions that motivate them. Remember what he said, sit it in my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. He's got an agenda for them <coughs> which is going to <coughs> supersede their own agenda. And ultimately as we enter into the end of the age, <coughs> the coming establishment of the kingdom, events are going to draw them to a point where they feel that they need each other to accomplish whatever it is they're going to be dealing with. Currently, each each one is doing his own thing. Sometimes they come together, sometimes they don't. We know for sure at the end 
of the matter of fact I'll give you a case in point turn to Revelation 16th chapter <clears throat> this is just one example Revelation 16, <coughs> verse 15, I mean verse 13, <coughs> 14. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world. So you got the surface world, you got the subterranean world being brought into a point of realization they need to act in concert. <clears throat> go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. This is something they would not have done on, on their own. <clears throat> Who motivates the dragon, the false prophet, to conjure these demons? The father. Yeah. So what we're finding, the fourth empire is going to be motivated to a common purpose of all races, tongues, and beings. Yes. These three frogs that come out of the mouth of, of the three that, that they come out of mm -hmm. are the are the influence that they will create supposed to be for the humans or for the Luciferians? No, no, no. Luciferians. The humans are already under the Luciferians' influence. Right. The Luciferians are going to be under the influence of these creatures. It says they work miracles. So they're going to be deceived. Sure. Just like the humans are being deceived to ultimately gather together to defeat, to stop the establishment of the kingdom. But this is just the ultimate. At the beginning of sorrows, the Father's going to set in motion things that every race and tongue in the creation is going to feel moves him to having a relationship with somebody else just like he's going to do on the earth he's gathering he's moving things into a position to climax his ma master plan it's interesting that these uh, unholy three as I call them mm -hmm. are knowingly manipulating the other kings, so they're trying to draw the other kings into this fight, not knowing that they themselves have been manipulated yeah, into doing it. That's yeah, just extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> so we said, Scripture indicates the Fourth Empire will connect all races of Luciferians on the surface, under the earth, and in the heavens. Turn to 1 Corinthians 8th chapter, verse 5. Eight. Eight, five. For though there be that are called gods, <clears throat> whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. So it's telling us that there are multitudes of these intelligent all of them far beyond the human some call gods some call lords what's the difference power mm. when you notice you notice most of it when it talks about gods is using a little g, Small g yeah. it's a god mm -hmm. so if my lord it's a capital g uh the war god uh the the god of the ancestor of uh the beast mm -hmm. <clears throat> the earth is festooned with them, probably more of them than they are humans. And what's going to happen is the Father is going to bring 
about uh, a situation that will involve all of them. They're going to be drawn together ultimately and then destined for judgment. Beginning of sorrows. It starts, the clock starts ticking for them. Turn to Daniel, 11th chapter, verse 36 to 39. <coughs> I feel sorry for the poor human race because they're going to get dumped on and not have the faintest idea of what's taking place because they didn't have time to investigate or listen or pursue these things what was there <coughs> in front of them. <coughs> Daniel 11, 36 to 39. This gives you a picture of The operation at this point, where this scripture is, they are now engaged in a common series of experiences. I'm not saying that they're together, but they have been drawn to understand that there is a common purpose that they need to address. 36. And the king, talking about the beast shall do according to his will and shall exalt, he, he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. What does that mean? Above every God. Every God in the heavens and the earth and the subterranean region. What does that mean? That means that they are going to be known in common. Even the humans will know them. You have to know them to be able to exalt him above them. So you see that the Lord is moving them in a direction. Now since he's magnifying himself above every God small g, mm -hmm. is the implication that he knows he can't magnify himself above the God of gods? He does. In the, spe in the speaking of marvelous things, that's him magnifying himself. Sure. Okay. He says it right here. <clears throat> Magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods. It's the father. It's outrageous. So this is telling us that all the pantheon of the gods are known. Mm -hmm. Something's happened to give everybody an understanding of their identity. They're not uh, 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 a um, nebulous concept. Right. You know who the god of XYZ is and you know that this guy is exalting himself above that guy okay. it's all going to be known this is, there's nothing that's hidden that will not be known let me take it one step further Yeah. in his magnifying himself and speaking marvelous things mm -hmm. is that purely to trick <laughs> the humans or does he really believe that he can be greater than the God of gods turn to Revelation 13 thank you this is what it's referring to amen Starting in verse 5. Mm. 5 and 6. <clears throat> it was given unto him a mouth, a voice, <laughs> speaking great things, okay. to speak marvelous things right. against. And blasphemies and power was given to him to continue 40 and 2 months. Right. Yes. Yes. God gives him the mouth to blaspheme God. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. All power comes from one one source, God. To make him and everybody else believe that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's a reason for it. That's a great delusion. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So they might be damned. Sure. <clears throat> but let's go on. Give my mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power. Power, Junimus, yes. was given unto him to continue forty and two months. He opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. <clears throat> it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them, and power was given to him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So, <clears throat> this is what Daniel's talking about. At this time, all 
the gods that ever exist are going to be known. <clears throat> and this guy is going to exalt himself above all the gods. It starts at the beginning of sorrows. The reality of the gods is going to be known. <clears throat> and it will progressively continue as the Father's plan progresses to bring the enemies of Christ. When we talk about the enemies, the, the human race is just a little granule in that statement. <clears throat> the enemies per pertain to the big shots of the creation. Movers and shakers. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> We're in verse 37. <clears throat> oh, Daniel 11. Daniel 11. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God who shall magnify himself above all. So at this point, they're all known. Mr. Jones, is the, nor shall not regard the women. Okay, so now, is that put in there because it's the Antichrist who is a man? No, it's talking about the respect the acknowledgement basically of the human race he's on earth he's in a body he looks at the human race that you would look at an amoeba the thing of it is the is desires they're, they're of including a desire for women but if he's not human if he if he's you know why why is that even put in there you know i don't understand that it doesn't say desire for women, it says desire of women. <clears throat> it doesn't regard the human existence. As a, as a human. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's looking at the human race sure. and the things of the human race with absolutely no recognition. If he's not regarding the gods, mm -hmm. capital G, sure. it's telling you what he thinks of the human race's desires and purpose. That they, as far as he's concerned, they don't have any valid reason even to exist. Yeah. What they want means nothing. Uh, they're purposeless, useless life forms as far as he's concerned. The only thing, value that they, that they exhibit is whatever it is that is going to advance his agenda. That's why he's in a human body. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, he wipes them out. That's why he's called the beast. <clears throat> well, let's go on. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God. For he should magnify himself above us. So he doesn't he doesn't recognize doesn't take into account the focus, the thought processes, the mindset of non humans let alone humans. He's not regarding any God at all in the outside. He's in, not regarding Yeah, he's yeah. not regarding humans sure. at all. Sure. Yeah. We're talking about the Antichrist. The beast. Okay. The beast you mean has changed the guy that's taken over the Antichrist. Number yeah, right, number right. eight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sorry to say it this way, guys. He, he's, he doesn't like uh, ants, so he stops on ants too. But why is that even being mentioned? Not that that's been mentioned. Why is he? Why is this information being given to us? Because it's not revelation for me yet. That he he's not this and he's not that. He's not this. He's because not you're that. being given an insight into 
what's going to take place that, re that determines the fate of the whole human race, why he does the things he does. The Holy Spirit is giving us an understanding of his motivations so that when he does things, what is he going to do? Deceive the whole human race. Mm. How does he look at the human race? With disdain. Mm. He cares less about the human race. And the human race is totally caught up in a, <clears throat> in a mesmerizing uh, allure toward him. They yes. bow at his feet. Mm -hmm. There's nothing he would tell them to do they won't do yet. And still, <clears throat> he'd wipe them out. As, as soon as look at them. But his focus is the human race and he's trying to take it. No, okay. No. Yeah. His focus is him. He's supreme authority over the gods, let alone the humans. Mm -hmm. This is what the scripture is trying to give okay. us an understanding. Right. The script, in, in the scripture's description, wow, it's a mouthful. We're seeing him, number eight, wearing the body of a human and the disparity between how a human would behave, which is what you're saying, how a human would behave and how a non-human God would behave. Yes, you But he, he, has to, he, he, he has to pretend to a certain degree because he's wearing that human body to trick it's part the human of the into, exactly into, yes. into doing it. That was my original point. I, 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 I realize that, that's why I said, I said that. <clears throat> but the idea <clears throat> is, the script is telling us <clears throat> He does not consider the humans because of his magnetism, because of, look, for a person to stand there and <clears throat> disparage the gods that humans are worshiping would ordinarily put them in a line in which you're offending this guy because that's, his, that's sure. his, you know, yes. it's a whole lot. Yes. And you're saying... I'm above that. Right, who are you? I'm above you. Wave your hand and a million people get wiped out. Mm. It's giving us his mindset. Absolutely. He doesn't have to feign anything. Mm -hmm. His charisma is overawing the human race. Absolutely. Drop down to verse, well, you're in verse 11, but... Verse 38. But is it a state he shall honor the God of forces, a God whose fathers knew not, so they honor with gold and silver and precious stones, and he gives them rule over the earth. <coughs> what the scripture is telling us <coughs> is that God the Father has engineered this. Yes. The human race has rejected him right. over and over right. and over and over again, disrespected him, blasphemed him, didn't acknowledge him. He sends his son to be butchered to benefit the human race and only a handful acknowledge it. Well, what is the result of this? The father says, okay, I'm going to engineer something for you. You've rejected me. You've disrespected me. I have loved you. I'm going to put somebody there that hates you. Mm. You're going to love him. I'm going to put somebody there that makes your life miserable. You're going to love him. You're going to lay your life down for him and you're going to go into eternity serving him. Mm. This is God's judgment. That's the judgment, exactly. And the scripture is telling us the makeup of this being. He is the epitome. He supersedes Satan mm. in the ability to conjure up evil. Satan is silenced by this individual because Satan's standing right there while the world is worshiping him. All the fathers doing why? Because of the human. Race. Turn to Second Thessalonians, second chapter. Verse 10, start with verse 10, <clears throat> talking about the beast coming after the working of Satan, in other words, he's got the power of Satan, 
He does the same thing Satan does when he eclipses Satan. Verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. God, at this point, is fed up with the rejection of humanity. He brushes wide creates aside. says all this stuff about, they'll know I'm the Lord. Forget that. This is going to be my judgment on these people. They're not going to recognize you. They've rejected you. They've even rejected me. So this is what's going to happen to them. Mm. So you should understand that in that judgment is the loss of the ability to recognize truth anymore. Exactly. Exactly. He's going to have them running circles. Verse 11. For this cause, what cause? They've rejected truth. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all, A-L-L, all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So God <coughs> designs this, raises this being for one purpose and one purpose only, that is to send the human race into damnation. That's it. We just read it. That they all might be damned. And this is exactly what happens. Revelation 13 says, everybody who is not written in the book of life <coughs> will worship him. Mm -hmm. Everyone. So from that point, it's all over. Yeah. <coughs> there has never been a colder heartless, more heartless life form than what you have here. Who hates everything and everybody but himself. Mm. There is nothing that he will not do to establish his own hegemony, satisfy and gratify himself. Uh... <clears throat> A human mind can't comprehend depths of this. Sure. Even Satan is, he doesn't realize at this point what's waiting for him. Mm. Because when you read here, <clears throat> verse 9 of chapter 2, it says, Even him whose coming is after, in other words, patterned after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying ones. Satan's gonna, not going to realize he's been eclipsed <clears throat> until this guy makes his appearance on the scene on the scene when he makes his appearance he'll be unlike any other being that's ever walked this earth he's being groomed for this by the even white vh can't comprehend the extent of what the father's doing here mm -hmm. but let's go on Be so glad that you're not going to be on earth when this guy makes his appearance. Praise the Lord. Scripture indicates the fourth empire, earth, will be a place where the gods will come and go continuously. This is going to be a... Um, way station. Exactly. A way station for the gods. Mm. Humans are going to be positioned in one location. The gods are going to be coming and going continuously. We see examples of that. Deuteronomy 32 verses 16 to They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods they came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. <clears throat> so you have a steady stream of these gods coming and going 
of being empowered and losing power, <clears throat> of being active and then shutting down their activities. That's why the humans are building idols to them because they've come and gone. But to the human that they made contact with, they made a connection and that connection has turned to veneration and worship. Well, God's not there anymore, but the idea of the, the human wanting that God in his life is still there. So he builds an image representing this God to continue his connection with him. The gods are coming and going consistently. Turn to <clears throat> Zephaniah, second chapter, verse 11. <clears throat> The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he shall he will famish all the gods of the earth. What does that mean? <clears throat> the word famish means to waste away. Of the Hebrew term raza. He will famish, waste away all the gods of the earth. And men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. <clears throat> The gods are going to lose power. Other gods are going to gain power. Now this is uh, Elohim, yes. not yes. wise reaction. Yes, okay. Elohim. His judgment mm -hmm. on the enemies of Christ. Right. One of the judgments is this. <clears throat> He's going to put opportunities, conditions. The gods are going to be brought into that particular situation. <clears throat> it's going to cause them to come under a judgment. It's going to be consistent. That's why you get changes, changes, changes. The final change is going to be from the first half to the second half, tribulation period, where all the whole regime of the harlot city goes down to judgment. It's replaced by another group that assumes rulership. Right. Who in that term will have the same judgment. Yes. This is the next principle. Scripture indicates all the gods who will be judged will be displaced from their places in the heavens and brought down to ground level. We're all going to experience the same thing. They're going to be brought from a high position to a low position. <clears throat> Some are going to be brought down to ground level. Others are going to be brought down to the level of the earth. <clears throat> But not in the physical, but in the spiritual realm, and dispatched. Jeremiah 10, verse 11. Thus shall you say unto them, the gods that have not made, uh, the word made there is kept, done, what they're supposed to do with regard to their calling and a position in the earth, have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. So they're going to go down to earth level, the the basement level and be dispatched from there. They're not going to be dispatched in the high regions that they originated in. They're going to lose power, come down here, and the people here are going to see them dispatched. We'll, uh, we'll go into an example of that in the next lesson.